So let us continue our discussion on predicate logic, in particular how the quantifiers are used. So we have looked at two things. One is the existential quantifier which is there exists x p of x and so we also looked at for all x p of x and then we looked at a special case which is there exist unique x such that p of x is true. Listen, if something is true for all of them, so true for each x, this implies that it is true for some x. If I say all boys are good, that means some boys are good. There exists at least one good boy. And if I say some are good, this need not imply all are good. If I say some boys are good, it may be the case that some are good, some are bad and it, this does not imply all x satisfy p of x or all boys are good. Okay, So this means we get two identities. So for all x, p of x implies there exists x p of x. Similarly, if you find at least one x such that p of x is true, this implies that there exists exactly one x such that p of x is true, which means there exists at least one x p of x is true. Converse need not be true. So converse need not be true. So in this case it may be the case that there are uh, two samples that satisfy p of x that doesn't imply there exists exactly one x p of x. Okay. And in this case uh, some are satisfying rest of them may not satisfy. So saying all are satisfying uh, no is false. There are specific instances meaning a specific UOD, a specific predicate for which converse may be true, but in general the converse is not true. Okay, So in context you find identities or expressions involving quantifiers of this type, you want to simplify for some reason, then I can either use this identity or use this identity. Okay. Let's see some more expressions uh, how to express using what we have discussed. Okay. So there are at least two satisfying the predicate p of x. Something like there are at least two good boys. Something like at least two good boys. So p could be anything and x comes from some universe of uh, discourse. So if that's the case, how do you represent this? So listen, so you find that uh, there exist x. When I say there exist x p of x, this means what? At least one x such that p of x. So when I say there exist x and uh, there exist why? So I say 
p of x and say p of y. But the correct way to write uh, this expression as soon as we pick the uh, element we associate uh, with its appropriate predicate. So before we choose the next element uh, we pick an element quantify pick the next element quantify and so on. So it is appropriate to write there exist x p of x and there exist y p of y. Okay, so this gives me at least one. This also gives me at least one. Correctly, yeah. But one has to be careful. So it may be the case that uh, x and y may be same. So it may be the case x equals y. Okay, so one should avoid that. So we say there exist x, p of x and there exist y, x not equals y and p of y. Now what is this telling me? At this place I find at least one x satisfying the predicate p. Then when I go over here, I ask for another element. At this point in time, y and x may be same, but the next, once you get inside, it says y is different from x. So which means you have identified two elements, x, y, such that x is satisfying the predicate p and y is also satisfying the predicate. So this means there are at least two such that p of x and p of y is true. So if you want to say that uh, there are at least two good boys, uh, there exist x he is a boy and there exist y he is also a boy, then you say x is good and x is not same as uh, y and y is also good. So to talk about uh, at least Two. This gives me at least one. You bring in one more element which is different from x. With that you can say at least two. Okay. So let's look at how to express at most two such that p of x. So at most 2x satisfying the, the predicate p. So this is equivalent to saying at least 3 such that p of x is false. At least 3 satisfying the predicate p is false. Or what can happen? So no x satisfy p or exactly one x satisfy p or at most 2. So exactly 2 x satisfy p. Correct? So all this can happen. Either you express at least 3 is false or you express no x satisfy this or exactly 1 x satisfy this or exactly 2 x satisfy this. So we will write both. So we want to express this statement in FOL at most 2 such that 
the p of x. Either you can write at least 3 such that p of x is false. See, here is the first order expression. So, there exists x, p of x. So, at this point in time, I will get at least 1. Then I come over here. I am asking for y which is different from x satisfying the predicate. So, at this point in time, at least 1. At this place, it becomes at least 2. Then I say, ask for z which is different from x, y and satisfying the predicate. So, this gives me that uh, the predicate is true for uh, at least 3. But that at least 3 is false. Okay. So, which means negation all of this. So, this gives me at least 1, this gives me at least 2, this gives me at least 3. If at least 3 is false, which means uh, it implies at most 2 is true. Or at most 2 is equivalent to saying uh, no x is satisfying or exactly 1 is satisfying or exactly 2 is satisfying. Fine. So no x is satisfying. This one says at least 1 x is satisfying that at least 1x is satisfying p is false which means no x is satisfying this. Exactly 1 is satisfying the predicate p. To express exactly 2, listen, this says at least 1. This says there exists y, x is uh, different from y and sorry y is different from x and uh, p of y is true. So, at this point in time we get at least 2. Now, we have to show that uh, it is exactly 2 and every other element in the universe of uh, discourse uh, it does not satisfy the predicate p. For all other elements such that y is uh, z is different from x and z is different from y. So, if you pick any other element, it turns out that uh, it is satisfying the predicate p is false. And there exists a third element in the universe of discourse satisfying the predicate p is false. So, it satisfies uh, at least one, at least two, third element is false. So, which means this captures exactly 2. So, this is exactly 2 and this is exactly 1 and exactly 0. So, at most 2 is equivalent to saying 0 x satisfying p, exactly 1 x satisfying p, exactly 2 x satisfying So now one can vary this and uh, a fine tuning of this expression will help you to play with uh, any other uh, predicate uh, asking for at most 10 samples are true, at least 3 samples are true and, and so on. So in general predicate p could be anything and the inverse of discourse could be anything and one can make use of uh, for all there exist and this quantifier and uh, express any given logical expression. Okay.